Welcome to Monday Night TPK. Hey, welcome back. This is Monday Night TPK. My name is Kyle, and I will be DMing this Dungeons and Dragons Real Play Fifth Edition podcast. Uh, sitting around the table. I've got four people who feel really proud of themselves and their ability to decipher dangerously, deadly, decrepit dungeons. That was good to be bombarded. Thank you. I'm <laughs> getting He's bombarded with that D. He's, I was just about to say, good with the D. What can I say? My, my D's run deep. Um... Uh, How are you guys feeling about the last dungeon that you just completed? Stupid. <laughs> stupid. It's stupid. I don't know, I feel like Rixer was pretty useful. He was pretty good at throwing and catching Gilly. <laughs> like, numerous times. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't bother you guys with individualized intros. Let's just get into this. Alright. I know nobody actually listens to the podcast for such nonsense. <laughs> hey, if I'm wrong, <laughs> tell me in a tweet by tweeting at us at Monday Night TPK. Sam? Yeah. What happened last week? Well, let's find out, shall we? I'm just itching to know. Okay. Well, in episode 39, um, we started out with Rixer straddling the puzzle squares on the floor. <laughs> Everyone else was near the ledge. Brielle was conscious, but looked not so good. So Gilly gave her some help. Ravane searched for clues in the dungeon. He found faded paintings on the wall, where there were swing, uh, and where we found the swinging traps. There was a picture of the man and crocodile in the jungle. And where the floor puzzle was, we found the man and the crocodile in the desert. Another painting was found on the ledge above us. Brielle and Gilly went up to the door ledge, and we saw the full painting of the man and the, with the crocodile on his back standing in front of a city wall. Maybe we have to touch all the points at the same time, question mark? Let's find out. So Brielle and Ravine, uh went to attempt the buttons at the same time, the buttons on the door, that is. So Gilly and Iku were down um, off the ledge, prepared to heal. Brixer was prepared to catch them. Ravane and Brielle flew back slightly as the dungeon roared with thunder as they touched the buttons at the same time. Gilly asked if they could leave the dungeon now. Ravane and Gilly switched spots, and Gilly climbed up on Brielle's shoulders. Brielle pushed the, the two bottom buttons indicated, and then Gilly pressed the two top buttons, and the door swung open. A big entryway was uh, present in the room in front of us, and then a larger room opened up with a spiral staircase in the middle. Brielle searched for traps, but doesn't find any obvious ones. The ceiling looked kind of sketchy, but other than that, the room was good. Gilly invited everyone up to the entryway as Brielle and Gilly entered the bigger room. Uh, the paintings on the wall of the bigger room depicted the man carrying the crocodile higher and higher up a mountain. Brielle took Gilly to the stairs, and we found 30 of them, one, each one foot higher than the last. Brielle and Gilly, um, Brielle had Gilly on her shoulders, and they started the trek up the pillar, and it was a little bit shaky. But uh, we made it to the top at Braille's feet. We found a ceramic jug, which was corked, um, and the jug had a maze all the way around it. Braille grabbed the jug, and they made their way back down the stairs. Gilly almost slipped, and then Gilly slipped again and took Braille down with her. Luckily, Rixer was able to save Gilly and Brielle from the fall. Gilly gave Rixer a treat bar for saving their lives, and Gilly expressed that she wanted to leave now. Ravane thinks the jug um, is magical, and it refills it itself with various things. 
The group went back through the traps to the entrance of the dungeon, and we made it through the House of the Crocodile. Woo! Yay! We did it! Crocodile noises. Chomp, 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 chomp. Yeah. Cool. So you guys stand in the daylight. Battered, bruised, burned. Victory prize in hand. I don't think Mixer's any of those things. He's just buff. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Okay, cool. As long as that's fine. It's fine. He's totally fine. I mean, Mixer essentially got, like, arm day taken care of. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Check. It's a little bit of a burn. It's a good burn? Just, yeah, just feel a, the burn. Just, <laughs> it's just enough strain to know that you've, like... You know, been doing something. Mm-hmm. You've been yeah. active. Not so much that you're like, you know, going to feel in the morning. Right. Right. Um, you're standing at the foot <laughs> of the statue. <laughs> Literally. Uh-huh. Literally. Uh-huh. Um, same scene that you left. Um, you were in there probably for a little over an hour total. You guys didn't take any official breaks or rests. But, like, you know, you stood around thinking, contemplating, getting thrown on your asses. Uh, so, all these things take time. You're just past midday. Okay. Sun is shining. It's really hot. Braille's gonna sit. Oh. Like, it's almost like, it's definitely cooler inside the dungeon you were just in than it is, like, out in the sun. <clears throat> Brielle sits. This is not care about the heat right now. So you're sitting. She's hurt. She's just gonna sit with the jug. She has a jug. Just one. Uh, Gilly. Gilly? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Gilly will come up to Brielle and pat her on the back. And cast. Nope. She stops you. Ah, uh, what? I'm helping. No. She says no. You're hurt. No. <laughs> but. No. Do you want to go sit in the tent? No. It's hot. <laughs> she signs, I'm sitting right here. Okay. Gilly sits next to Brielle, <laughs> defeated. <laughs> she also hands you the jug. Because you wanted to look at the maze. Yeah. So, Gilly will hold it and look at the maze and just say, Water! Again. And this time, uncork it. You can hear a sloshing of liquid inside, and, uh, I mean, nothing happens if you're not pouring it out. Um, she'll take, like, like a bandana or something she would have and try to dump something out of it or dump a little bit out onto put the bandana on the wood or the stone and dump yeah uh, it looks to be clear clean uh fresh water okay real takes it again and she just dumps the water on her head <laughs> she gives it back and it pours out oh. Shaking her head around. Do you feel she better? She brushes the water back through her hair. So I am refreshing. I am familiar with how this works, right? How the alchemy jug works. Yeah, I mean, you're you were at like in a traditional magical school mm-hmm. where, I mean, this is a, simply an uncommon yeah. Yeah. item. So these are all over the world. Uh, a bit of a concern. Perhaps in the future you should specify what kind of water, because it could produce seawater. Oh. And you don't want to get a mouthful of undrinkable salt water. Good point. <laughs> Are you salty? She leans over to the well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> it was it was fresh water. I guess you know. she like licks her lips or whatever. Okay. Good. I don't know how bad the fates have it out for us or not. I mean, I have it out for you, so 
do with that what you will. All right, folks. So now that uh, Brielle has dumped water on her face, and you guys have discovered this thing can produce liquids. Is mayonnaise really a liquid, though? It's not really a solid. If I dump it into something, it will take it on the shape of what I poured true. into. That is true, but cats do that, too. And cats are a liquid. We're going with this. Oh, that's yeah, true. Okay. So where do we go from here? Back to the boat. Back to the boats. We're going to go. Do we want to rest here, or do we want to rest on the river? Braille legit, legitimately asked those questions. I mean, I suppose... A couple of us need a break. We can take a break here. It's nice. There are some tents set up. <laughs> and there's dinner. The <laughs> <laughs> bananas? No, the, uh, the chicken. Oh, and it's still, like, ignoring you guys. The, there's an axe beak in the, <laughs> uh, in the Japan, right? Yeah, it's kind of ignoring you guys. Good. Mm, we alone. take it. No. We take a break. Mm. A little quick rest. I think, I think we should take a short rest. Yeah. Um, Iku will tell you. Um, if you want to rest for an hour or so, and she kind of looks up at the statue. I, I'm happy to. Climb to the top of the statue and sit as a lookout. Uh, if I see anything dangerous, I will call out to you, or come down and talk to you quietly, depending on the <laughs> situation. That would be very <clears throat> helpful. Thank you. She smiles. Let's take a break. Okay, we should all sit down. Um, Are you just on the statue? Mm-hmm. Look I mean, for an too. area that's kind of shaded, so we're not in the sun, or maybe like a tent that's still usable. Yeah, I mean, some of the tents had been destroyed, um, and most of them look like they've been totally just ransacked. But um, a lot of them uh, look at like they're in passable condition. Right. Um, there are several uh, smaller uh, five by ten foot tents, and then there are two kind of larger um, twenty by twenty. Passed by those when I first snuck in. Yeah, 20 by 10, 20 circular tents. I said we go just kind of sit in one of the bigger tents and cool off. Yeah. And take a break. Sure. Yeah, you guys can enter uh, the nearest of the two larger circular tents. Um, there's kind of a, like there's a, there's a main opening, I mean, like kind of a double flap. It's kind of very obvious that can, mm-hmm. be, can be tied closed from the inside. Um... But the one you walk into, you, you see that, but then you walk in and you can see along the back there is a slit. Like someone took a sword straight through the canvas. Um, and it's definitely tall enough where a person could slip, slip there. through there. Um, inside, you see uh, two, uh, what were probably once upon a time, very nice trunks, um, just completely smashed. And you can see clothing inside. Um, a handful of coins, miscellaneous other personal items and clothing and whatever. Um, there is uh, there are two cots, one of which has kind of got a broken leg and is kind of sagging. The other one is still intact, but uh, the contents of it have been kind of like disheveled pretty severely. Um, there is a, a table, uh, which is still sitting upright, um, and it's got some very basic cooking utensils, kind of like you know, some of them are upright, some are kind of flipped over. There's two chairs that have been flipped over. Um, but both both the chairs look also to be still in condition if they're if they're righted. Okay. Um, and there's you know, there's there's not a lot of like comfort things here beyond just some crude tables, chairs and beds, but it's out of the sun. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. all that we really kinda of wanted. Mm-hmm. And you guys can take a breather. Uh, the cop is broken. Rickster's going to, like, kind of sit right in front of it, and then it's it slanted, and, yeah. like, lean back against it. Like, use it essentially as a back to lean. Yeah, he can, I mean, it's well, otherwise sturdy enough for him to kind of lean back against and kind of relax just a little bit. Yeah, lounge back. 
And like I said, you guys can easily write the chairs in there. There's, not, there's nothing fancy about them. They're just wooden chairs, but they're sturdy, and they you can sit down. And um, Brielle's going to look around and see if she can find, like, a mirror, maybe? So maybe a small personal mirror somewhere. Um, you find a hand mirror That'll that's work. got, but it's got like a big cr- spiral crack in it. She doesn't, that's fine. Uh, she's just going to take that and kind of set it up <clears throat> somewhere that she can and try to fix her hair and <laughs> mess around. Um, as she's just kind of sitting here bandaging herself up and then she will fix the disaster the that is her hair from the heat and weather. It's slow going and kind of hard to really see what you're doing, but taking some time, you can, she can, I don't know, do something with it. Dana, sorry. Oh, I was just saying that Rixer would hold the mirror. Oh. Oh, well, she it will work. Does casting a spell as a ritual interfere with a short rest? That's a good question. I feel like technically it would, but I mean, like, you guys could also do it when you first get there and chill for an extra 11 minutes or whatever. Oh, so, no, it's, it, no, it's fine, it's fine. I was just... The, the 10 minutes isn't going to make a big difference. Yeah. I mean, do, we can do rest for an hour and 10 minutes if you want to cast a ritual right when we first get there. Oh, no, it's fine. It, it was something that I can do, but I need to know if it's going to interfere or not. I'll just take a short rest. Okay. Yeah, because I think casting a spell counts as not light work. It's, you know, mentally taxing to some yeah. degree or another. Um, anything else you guys do while you're sitting here for an hour, just kind of resting out of the sun? Billy's gonna help Brielle with her hair. That's it. We haven't actually like looked through any of our stuff recently. You guys have not. Um, we already determined there was anything up with that Warhammer. When you found it at the uh, that abandoned campsite forever yeah. ago. Yeah, forever ago. Um. You guys weren't able to determine anything special about it. So we already know what the jar is. I have both those sets of arrows. Um, I have that one pack of arrows I haven't gone through. Yeah, you got a couple days ago in game that I told you. Yeah. If you ever go through it to let me know. Um, let's go through that real quick. So you're pulling out your arrows. In particular, this pack that you had found a while back. And when you pull the arrows out, you discover that one of the arrows is much different than the others. Uh, to be specific, be more specific, instead of a traditional arrowhead, you find that it has a what looks to be a large waka nut uh, affixed to the end of it. And you know from you know, your own experience with a walking nut that uh, if you give it a good shake, it emits light. Yep. Uh, does the if I shake the arrow a little bit, does it do that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's interesting. And then she'll slip it back in. Um, <clears throat> I have that top made of brass with gears. Don't well, think I've investigated that. You know that it can spin on its own. Just turn it upright on a flat surface. And just it starts sit to... it down and it spins, or do I have to like click it? Nope, just sit it upright on a flat surface, and it, spins. And it will just start spinning in place. Huh. And, and I think you had discovered that uh, some time ago. I think that might be her new like meditative thing. She's just going to sit it down and let it spin. That's fun. And, like, stare at it. If you have anything you'd like me to take a look at, uh, I would be happy to after I finished um, refreshing myself. She holds the top. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, nothing really happens. You guys have a full hour of, uh, well, at least an hour. That's how long you can yeah. be there. About an hour. Hour and ten minutes or whatever is fine. Of... Peace. Awesome. Alright, so I'll get that 14 hit points on the dice. 
And one of my spell slots back. I think you may have been pulling somebody over. Because it was a quick, well, and then it was done. It sounded like hey, somebody yelling or screaming. It sounded like a police siren just doing mm-hmm. a whoop, whoop, and then it was here. done. <clears throat> Is there anything else that Brielle wants Ruvain to take a look at? The only thing I have left to pull out, and I don't think we've actually taken a look at this thing, any of us, is the blue little pendant. Where did we get that from again? With, from the goblin. The goblin queen? Yeah. Right. She had it on her neck. I'm going to pull that out and just start like looking over it. Yep, so what I had described before is it's a, it's a pretty hefty pendant. Um, circular on like a attached to a gold chain, uh, kind of thick, thicker bands of gold of chain, and it's probably going to be about four or yeah, five inches in diameter, so really it's pretty beefy. Pretty, yeah, it's pretty big. Um, and it's got a circular, circular rings inset within each other, uh, alternating between gold and blue. Um, kind of like a very vibrant, uh, vibrant blue. And across the back of it, and the back of it is otherwise just flat and plain, but uh, V O R N. Right, that's the only been, thing I have marked on my notes about this is that it said born. Yeah, it's or like it's scratched done. into the golden back of it. Um, Ruvain, this is a, once again, this is something that like. You're 99% sure you know what this is as soon as you see it. Just because you're trained in Arcana. Alright. It's because the DC is 10. And, <laughs> I don't know. I, like I, I want to try to give stuff away if you're trained in something. Okay. Um, that is a Shield Guardian Control Amulet. What? I don't uh. even know what that is. <laughs> Basically, sometimes wizards will have these huge metal suits, metal armor constructs to protect their belongings and that amulet allows them to command them. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a pretty fair... Mm -hmm. uh, I was hoping to have a card for that, but the amulet itself is Mm -hmm. not an item in the DMG. Mm -hmm. It's mentioned with the creature in the monster manual. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But... You, you hit the nail on the head. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you want to know any really details, give me an arcana knowledge. I do have identify. If you want to cast identify... Do you, do you tell Brielle that you have identify? Mm-hmm. I, I, I said I could take a look. At, I can identify them after we've rested. Because the short uh, ritual casting will interfere with the rest. I don't want to least my spell slots on. Yeah. <laughs> so you cast identify? Yeah. As a ritual. Sure. Yeah. Um if you do a little component pouch, pull up my pearl and ask for the amulet. <laughs> so it was over. As you suspected, it is the control amulet of a shield guardian. Uh, you know that every shield guardian has an amulet magically linked to it. A shield guardian can have only one corresponding amulet, and if that amulet is destroyed, the shield guardian is incapacitated until a replacement amulet is created. A shield guardian's admir- amulet is subject to direct attack. If mechanics, mecha- uh, crafting a new one is expensive, uh, a shield guardian has the primary focus and goal of protecting the wearer. The wearer can command the guardian to attack its enemies or to guard the wielder against attack. If an attack threatens to injure the wearer, the construct can magically absorb the blow into its own body, even at a distance. A spellcaster can store a single spell within a shield guardian, which can then cast the spell on command or under certain conditions. Uh, Hello. I am. <laughs> a shield guardian's ownership can be transferred by giving its matching amulet to another creature. Some wizards. No, this is all. This is all fluff. Uh, 
I would also let you would also know that um, if someone were to attune to one of these, and if the shield guardian is still active somewhere from the world, it, they can summon the shield guardian to them, and it will make the most direct path possible as long as it's on the same plane of existence. So I've been carrying this around for days. You're not attuned to it, yeah. But I'm not attuned to it. Right, you haven't actively, like, spent an hour focusing on this thing to attune to it. You've been sitting in the bottom of your backpack. Sick dog. I always just say, if it's on your person, you attune to it. Something so. this unique and powerful, I want you to know you, know you got it. That makes sense. Yeah. So, would Rubain, like, for... Pretty much word for word, recant this information. Yes. So it has to run to us? She says, does it, Bria will sign, does it teleport? Does it teleport? Does it run? <laughs> That'll be a delay. We'll choose the most direct path to get to the owner of the amulet. <laughs> it's running. <laughs> we picked that up so many days ago. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's been a couple of days. It was like the day before they met. Yeah. 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 So it's been a couple like two of days. Two days. Yeah. Um, but again, you would know you have to attune to it before that happens. Yeah, you might want to hold on or pick somebody to hold on to Brielle that for a little while. Brielle just instantly hands it to Gilly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just yanks it right out of his hands and gives it to Gilly. Put it on I... and shove it underneath <laughs> my... I see the wisdom in that decision. Close. <laughs> okay. Close so, uh, you guys are doing an hour. I'm going to roll a d6 to see how many tens of minutes you were into this hour before you started that to decide if it's going to take an hour of concentration. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, you were 40 minutes into your hour rest period when you made this discovery. Okay. So, it would take another hour again. Okay. Yeah, we, we can, uh, we can, you know, I mean, use, it's only midday. Use, use our little bit of downtime here to get these out of the way while she attunes. If there's anything else. Yeah. She hands you the, the brass top. Identify? Yep. Um. So does it even look magical? Does it look mechanical, I guess? You, I mean, there's with, gears in it? It's, yeah. All he told me is it's a top made of brass with gears. So, so does identify... Does a ritual work for multiple, like for more than one item, or is it just one item? He would one have item. to cast it again. again. Yeah, he would have to cast it. Again. I mean, it looks but for wasting different, hour. and it's it spins on its own when you put it up right. So you cast that cast again, ritually. Uh, before I do that, can I just do another quick arcana to see if it would be if it looks or if it's just something mechanical? Do it. Nice. <laughs> uh, so nine and a die. Fifteen. You get the vibe that it might be a a very unique combination of map mechanics and engineering. Hmm. <clears throat> Would artifice be a appropriate term here? Uh, I'm explain that to me. Uh, magic and technology and artificer. You, with your fifteen, don't think an artificer is what. what well, is, you don't artificer. think that's the origin of this. Okay, then I will do identify that. Okay. Yeah, I know the origin of this. So, in terms of like what it can do, mm -hmm. literally, you put it on a flat surface and it starts to spin. So it's a, it's a toy. But with your identify spell, mm -hmm. uh, you're. You get the feeling this thing came from the plane of Mechanus. Yep. Oh. Mm -hmm. This is not this world. This is a construct of Mechanus. Braille's being a little mouth to check. <laughs> See if she knows anything. Okay. About Mechanus. Well, it's not too bad. Uh, I don't have history, so I'll just do a base. Uh, 14. You have no idea. Kind of shrugs. Up. Takes it back, sits it down, lets it spin. And watches it. A place of 
gears in systemic processes. It's very organized, very persistent with how it runs. She's kind of shrugs. <laughs> okay. It watches its head. <laughs> and as long as it's sitting upright on a flat surface, it <laughs> continues to spin. He, he starts babbling like a wither, then he just tunes it out. Cool. Now what? Anything else? That's all we have right now. The only magical items we have, we've, uh, I think we've already identified, we have the the jar of Kyogaten, which is the ointment. We have the alchemy jug. We have the blue pendant, which we've now identified. The top. Yeah, that looks like it's it. Cool. Playing catch up here after however many days of running for your lives nonstop. Yeah. We haven't yeah. had an actual sit down. <laughs> Other than re- like full nights resting for a while. Sure. Can we just sit in the tent, like expectantly dancing, waiting for her? <laughs> As she continues to spend this time um, attuning to her uh, to this this amulet, um, especially since she said she kind of, yeah, especially since you said she like kind of slid it down mm-hmm. down her shirt a little bit, you can feel it. It's a little bit warm. Oh, it's getting hot. Not not hot, but like. Well, it's warm. It has some warmth to it. It's warm. Um, do you guys do anything else during the time when she would be continuing to attune? I don't think there's really much else we can we need to do. Is Rixer doing anything during this time? Good whittle. So good, yeah. Uh, I have that. Uh. Chewinga that was working on carving. Yeah, you can continue working on that. Um, how? Oh, I'm like, why does it say lol afterwards? It's like L O L. What? Oh, I have zero out of slash, and then I was gonna ask you how long, how, like, how many times I'd have to work on it to finish it. Yeah, two more times. Okay. So I have one out of three. Cool. So the time passes, um, you guys just chill a little bit, relax, thinking about what, you know, what you've learned, what you've obtained, debate whether or not that dozen was really worth an alchemy jug. <laughs> I mean, we don't want to worry about rainwater as much now. I mean, we should probably still collect, but... Yeah. Um, about an hour, so after an hour of attuning to this amulet, Gilly, uh, Gilly begins... No, 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 that's not how I phrase it. Gilly hears a voice. Just say one word. Waiting. Initializing. <laughs> I say. Target acquired. <laughs> I say back out loud. Come here. On my way. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's coming! <laughs> it's happening! It's coming! <laughs> oh, this is exciting. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, I was going to ask um, if you knew anything about the name that was on the back of it. The Vera? Is it a wizard or is it. V O R N. Born. 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 Yeah. Do you know anything about Born? Braille's asking. I mean, I have an assumption, uh, but that's an assumption. Well, what's your assumption? That that's the what the wizard called the Shield Guardian. Sure is an assumption. Mm-hmm. She didn't know maybe it's a wizard. Is there is, you is can, history? You can talk about the history. Yeah. She was just wondering if it was the wizard. Is it the wizard? But it could be the robot. It could be the robot. And again, uh, 50. You really have no idea? I'll ask you when it gets here. <laughs> okay. It's coming. So, <laughs> should we wait here for it? Yes. I would like to wait here for it. <laughs> or there's going to be like a big metal thing to have days travel upriver running towards us the <laughs> entire time. <laughs> I would mm-hmm. rather it get here okay. and we'd be able to use it. Braille poses a question. What's your question? It's a shield guardian. Yes. How is it going to travel with us? 
How the most direct is this thing? possible. Uh, what's what's that? How big or like heavy are That's they? That's what, uh, uh... They're about 10 feet tall. Huh? Yeah, Brielle's rolling cool. your knowledge about them. I have a mini for them. Um, I don't think I have Arcana. Arcana's under your thumb. Right you can give me a history check. I don't that? have history either. So I'll just mm-hmm. do a base 10. It's, um, 14. You've probably seen, the, like, in a bigger city. Yeah. Especially if it's a big city with, like, there's wizarding schools. You've probably seen super posh, fancy-looking wizards who you probably turned your nose out of at a little bit, like, traveling beside what would look like an enormous suit of armor. And that would probably be what you, like, now that you've had this conversation a little bit, you might be able to connect, like, that's probably what it is. That's going to be the extent of what Brielle's going to know about Shield Guardian on her own. Uh, so she's going to she's gonna describe what she believes it looks like. Oh, that's awesome. And then she's going to reiterate, how is it going to go with us? We have an extra rowboat. She's going to say, with how tall it is, and it's made of metal, do you think it's going to sit in a rowboat by itself? How, uh, how long is a rowboat, approximately? Mm-hmm. 10 feet without sinking the robot. Just lay down. Then the weight will be distributed evenly. Mm. And it'll be stealthy. <laughs> like, why do they have an empty canoe with them? <laughs> <laughs> Wing. It just sits up. Wonk. Destroy. <laughs> Kill mode <laughs> activated. <laughs> Would you like me to activate kill mode? Sorry. No, 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 I want you to do that. <laughs> Hello, Master. I have gained self-awareness and a thirst for murder. How was your day? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, how long do you guys wait here? I think we should wait for it. I really want to wait for it. You've given me this treasure, and now you're going to take it from me. <laughs> I've gotten like one thing plus the ration bars but those are like <coughs> half gone so <laughs> Bri- Brielle gets a point of inspiration for the generosity I have one uh, that sucks to suck. <laughs> I should have used it earlier when I rolled that net one <laughs> <laughs> I think we should wait and then I think we should see if it fits in the robo I think this would be very beneficial it could be a heel bot or a guiding bolt bot. <laughs> uh, Braille's gonna go out of the tent and go and uh, find Iku, who said she said she was on top of the statue. There's a giant statue coming. Yep. Where do we go? <laughs> uh, she's gonna climb up there to go talk to Iku. It's a very difficult climb. There are parts where it's completely sheer. Uh, give me a acrobat. I mean, acrobatics, or athletics. Fifteen. Um, you're able to get about halfway. Um, but again, it's it's quite difficult going. Ooh, that's really good. That's over twenty. Um, it takes. Like everything <laughs> for you to get there. And, and Iku is sitting uh, down on the snoot of the crocodile, kind of like watching you politely <laughs> as, you, as you make your way scramble to the top. And she will smile. <laughs> oh, Brielle, that is a fantastic job climbing you did. I, if you had asked, I would have came better. down. <laughs> it's too bad he just shoves me out. <laughs> you and your, your friends have been in there for, for some time now. What is the plan? She says, uh... Brielle says this out loud? Nope. She signs. Okay. Okay. I mean, she mouths everything, so if she could super, super hear, she could hear. She speaks at a really low whisper, but... Um, uh, she will sign to her that uh, we have discovered that the amulet that we found on the goblins is a shield guardian control device. So heads up, there may be something barreling through the forest anytime. 
Um, Gilly wants to wait for it. Also, while we're up here, I want to see, like, perceive around to see if I can see the trail of this giant ten foot thing coming. Ten foot is as tall as the secret is. I don't um, know how big they are. They're large creatures. They're large, they're large, they're so ten feet is not good. Yeah. Um, Iku was going to think for a moment, and then she's going to ask you, can you, can you describe to me a shield and Garvey? I have never seen one. Uh, I guess she'll describe what she best can from what she's seen. Um, the metal suit, uh, can be tall. She nods. Typically, typically used by wizards. Pompous ones. That's you. <laughs> um, Iku, Bless you. Iku will nod, uh, and she kind of stares off a little bit as if she's thinking. I believe, I believe I have seen this in the jungle. I didn't. I had never encountered one, so I did not know what it was. It is approximately, uh, I would say, five days walk from here. Which direction? Um, she points out kind of across the river, out kind of towards uh, where you guys had been, actually. Oh, well, would not want to wait here for five days. <clears throat> this camp has been raided once. I don't want to stay here and wait for it to happen again. <clears throat> I mean, eventually it'll catch up to us while we're sleeping. That's what I'm thinking. So, um, I say we wrap up. I'll get Gilly to, I'll persuade Gilly that we should go. Iku we should will, probably get back on the river. Iku will nod, um, and then she'll say that, um, we have, uh, probably maybe four hours of daylight left. Now, we can spend it however you would like. If you would like to get back on the river, we can get back on the river. She'll say that, I mean, it's four hours down the river, more than what we're going to get if we just stay here. It is your choice. Um, Brielle will start heading back down, climbing back down this, this statue. Um, Iku uh, continues to sit on the snoot of the crocodile. Um, Gilly, I'm sorry, Brielle, you did say, though, that you wanted to kind of survey while you were... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to take a look around. Sure. See what I can see while... Because this is really tall, so I could probably see... Oh, you've pictures. got a spectacular view of the surrounding area. That's not good. Um... That's perception. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, so... 16? Um... The view is gorgeous. You can see, you know, to the north, uh, a mountain range breaking above the, the, the trees. Um, you can see a, a small, kind of towering mountainous figure off to the uh, east. Um, and you can see further down the river as you kind of watch where the river comes up, you know, flows. Um, you can see the trees. It's, it's, at this point, it is very, very far in the distance, but you can see the trees kind of open um, into some other thing that doesn't have tall trees. Oh, interesting. Uh, but it is still all very green. Um, Brielle will inquire to Iku, like, what that area is. Is um, that where we're going? She, she shrugs. She'll say to you that uh, what, you, what you're seeing is the Aldani Basin. Uh, the, the river flows into the basin um, and, and turns into numerous smaller streams. Uh, we are going to go into the basin and then uh, get within uh, about two days journey to Umbala. Oh. Um, once, we, once, we get, once, we, once we reach the basin. Interesting. I don't see, like, there's no more, like, statues or maybe something along that, or the path of the river that I can see from here. No statues catch your eye. Um, you can see a very, very 
What was your perception score? 16. Yeah. You... Oh, I don't see anything else. Okay. <clears throat> so look at the distance here. And you don't see anything yeah. else. What do my elven eyes see? Um, I guess... She'll think... She'll be, and she'll be sitting next to Iku like the whole time that sure. they're having this conversation. Um, and she'll thank Iku and tell her that she'll meet her down, down below when she's ready to go. And then start heading back down the side of the statue. Iku watches you descend. Gilly is like excitedly like, peeking her head in and out of the tent. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Brielle comes back, and she tells you, we're leaving. Why? She uh, says that Iku thinks she has seen this thing in the in the jungle, and it's like five days away. Aww. We're not waiting here five days. It will catch up to us. That makes sense. So we're going to head, she says, we've got about four hours left of the day. Okay. So why don't we just jump on the river? Head down the river for four hours or so, and we'll make camp. Okay. That way we have four hours head start on tomorrow. Sounds good. Okay. All right, yeah, you guys are very easily able to get back in the canoes. Um, you have the canoe you've been carrying. You have the one rowboat you guys put all your stuff in. Mm-hmm. And you do have another rowboat, empty, floating there, uh, tied up on the back. She said, we're able to look at that boat and then say, do we want to take this boat to see if the shield guardian will be able to sit in it? Mm-hmm. Or do we want to just let the shield guardian run alongside us in the river? Guys, guys, guys. Rowboat sidecars. Eh? Yeah. Eh? <laughs> yeah, right? Also, you can just tie it behind one of the other ones. That's true. Sorry. Or you could also just tie it behind one of the other ones. Like a rowboat caravan. Yeah. 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 Did we have three boats at one point? Two. We started out with two. Just two. Probably you had three at one point. Maybe we just had two. Mm, just two. Uh, I mean, if nothing else, we just ditch it somewhere yeah. we decided we don't want to keep it uh but if we just have this thing run alongside the river <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit loud <laughs> maybe we don't want that all the time <laughs> i think you might be surprised and it might actually be able to ride in a boat like, I, I think possibly roll the boat Ooh. yeah <laughs> That's just a theory. So I guess we'll find out in five plus days. Let's go. Maybe you can <laughs> swap out its arms for oars and then in, inflate its uh, flotation device <laughs> and use it for a makeshift canoe. <laughs> what? That's ridiculous. Oh. That's, that's crazy. That's, that's, too far. that's just as crazy as backpacking somebody to get through a dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> he has water wings. <laughs> You guys are back on the back on the river. Uh, I want one of you to roll me a D four. I got it. Yep. Three. Cool. All right, you guys are able to go for the rest of the evening. Um, you go several hours, you know, more behind you. Uh, do you? Once it starts to get close to nightfall, you try to find a place to set a camp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this is something you haven't done really for a while on the yeah. river, but you had done it numerous times before, and you're able to uh, do it again. You're able to find a place, pull the pull the boats up, so you know circle them around you, keep things safe. Um, you got your small tents and your. Do you set out your water catcher still? Yes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, yeah, because we would have used water for some water for this day. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, so I will set it up to try and just fill us back up. Okay. And you guys have been still good on food and 
He found all the I guess ration bars at the Goblin yeah. Village. So yeah, we're like back over to a month's worth of supplies. Cool for rations. Cool, cool. I need to have something attacking. Get rid of all that stuff, don't I? <laughs> no. All right. I feel like this is a good place to call it for the episode. It's shockingly happy and upbeat ending after some some recent <clears throat> weirdness and unfortunate things. Sam? That's all for tonight. Thanks for listening. Uh, feel free to get to know us a little bit better. Talk to us on the Facebook, the Twitter, and Instagram at Monday Night TPK. You can also find Monday Night TPK at Above the Table Games on YouTube. Please rate and review us on iTunes. Thanks for listening, and we'll always save a seat at the table just for you. You have 10 seconds to comply. <laughs> <laughs>